Okay, guys, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I see that we have four attendees uh, joining us uh, right now. So we're gonna wait um, maybe one, one more minute to see if um, we have any more. So stand by and uh, we are going to start our webinar soon. All right, guys, so uh, welcome. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Um, this is uh, a joint webinar that we have. Um, the title of our webinar is Backup of the Service versus Object-Based Storage Where They Don't Tell You. So on this webinar, uh, my name is Aaron. I am a project manager here at Storage Guardian. Uh, joining us on the panel is Armory Fairjin, the owner operator of Storage Guardian. Vicky Bruns, she is the manager um, and a marketplace and vendor specialist at ConnectWise, as well as George Crump. He is the CMO of Store One. George comes with 20 plus years of um, data analyst uh, experience, and he'll be talking to us about, um, we'll be picking his brain on some of the stories for um, anecdotes and uh, cloud storage. So to give you a little bit of overview of Storage Guardian, uh, we have over two decades of experience in backup and disaster dis uh, recovery. Uh, we believe cloud should be easy, but the devil is in the details. Um, with our unique mechanism, we provide consumption-based billing and full integration into ConnectWise Manage. Uh, we are a Connect We are in ConnectWise Marketplace and an event partner for over the last five years. Um, we deliver through the marketplace, accuracy and price point, security and usability, and we also have third-party security integration. So I'm gonna pass that to Vicky to talk a little bit uh, more on the third-party security integration. Vicky. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for having, having George and I on, Aaron and Omri. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, for those of you who may not know what the ConnectWise Marketplace is, it's our e-commerce platform where ConnectWise partners can go and essentially provision licenses on a, on a usage basis. And so that is actually a, an integration that we have set up with Storage Guardian today. And so when Aaron mentioned the fact that uh, there's the accuracy by price point, it's really because we are pulling the literal usage from Storage Guardian through APIs and then billing our partners uh, based on that consumption. So. The other awesome piece is that these are ConnectWise partners that are utilizing the marketplace and, and being able to provision. So it's hidden behind the single sign-on. Uh, we have a lot of security that we put in place for our partners and continually are, are auditing and making sure that we're keeping uh, partners protected. And then the other piece, which is so awesome, uh, is that Storage Guardian has taken the additional step to make sure that partners are secure when using ConnectWise integrations. And what I mean by that is ConnectWise has an, uh, an integration program called Invent. And what we did in this latest iteration of the Invent program is we were utilizing a third party vendor called Vericode that the vendor like Storage Guardian uploads their, um, their code into and then looks for potential vulnerabilities and basically vets the code, make sure that it's secure. And then and, and in essence, we're protecting partners that are using those integrations and keeping them safe and sound. So if you go to the, to the marketplace, it's, uh, it's marketplace.connectwise.com. And you'll see little badges that are at the bottom of each vendor tile. And Storage Guardian has a badge for manage, 
Um, so an, a certified invent badge for manage and then also a certified invent badge for ConnectWise Automate. Awesome. Back, yeah, back over to you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Vicki. Yeah. Um, so in the in the last couple of years, what we see is a increase for a need for cloud storage. Um, and that makes sense because with the available data, uh, massive ex existing data that we're already collecting and the need for archival, uh, we have an increase in cloud storage need. And of course, there is the cost. And so what we see is that um, there's a lot of vendors in the that is uh, promoting a low cost object based storage. Um, hyper cloud bed providers are focusing on low cost storage and one of the things they do is to distract you with the low cost carrot to deliver a low cost by isolating the storage costs from the real cost and here i'm going to pass it to armory um, our founder and operator to talk about the hidden cost and the cost segmentation that we often see with object uh, based storage armory to you Thanks, Aaron. So what we have here is um, an iceberg, and it's really um, the easiest way to describe it. So you have the top cost, which is the storage layer, um, often exposed with a object-based storage. It's an API call to the storage. But um, to get to the object-based storage, there's a lot of management, uh, you know, licensing fees and ongoing technical support. Uh, at the server or at the, the data center level to leverage that low cost storage. So, you know, to properly implement object based storage, there is a lot of time effort, such as Veeam licensing, SQL licensing, VMware licensing, hypervisor licensing that, uh, you know, needs to be implemented before you get to that storage. So, you know, it's often the case is, you know, the devil is in the detail in order to leverage that low cost storage, you know, uh, you need to go through um, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, licensing validation. Um, and what Storage Guardian has built out is a SKU via the ConnectWise marketplace, which is more aligned with our managed service offering, which is based on a point and click technology, just consume for what you need, and then focus on your core competencies which is uh, proactive monitoring and um, building service contracts, managed service contracts a lot around that and avoiding the pitfalls of hidden costs of um, licensing software, creating licensing agreements, uh, submitting monthly points. It's just strictly a point in, in a click through the ConnectWise marketplace. And if um, you need to increase it's easily done via the marketplace and uh you know we're not saying object storage is not the right fit it's just you know not you know it's not one fit one size fit for all there's you know different uh, use cases for object storage um but if you're trying to build out a backup as a service just realize that uh, object-based storage will not give you, you know, the recovery time objective you're necessarily looking for. And um, there's a lot of upfront infrastructure costs to get there. And, um, you know, um, really um, we're here via the marketplace out of um, with the, our Veeam SKUs is really to help out shape out your uh, uh, backup disaster recovery um, uh, as a service um, via the marketplace at a low cost you know, with uh, no hidden costs, it's just consume, and what you need is uh, what you buy, and and that's really it. Next slide, Aaron. Okay, uh, actually, George, um, tell us a little bit about the uh, front the infrastructure, and I guess the 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 hidden cost of because the storage is not everything, right? So, um, can you share with us? Um, some stories and some some of the things that you often see in the field where people are just really focused on a low storage cost. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Aaron. Uh, so I, I think, you know, I would always be wary of uh, any situation where somebody wants to force you into one thing, whether it's, you know, uh, car buying or storage buying, right? You, you want some flexibility. You want to make sure you're getting the right thing. The other thing is, you know, object storage is not the cure-all for 
uh, every data storage problem, right? It's 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 a protocol, right? It's it's you know, to, to some extent it's no different than block storage or NFS or SMB. It's really what's underneath that makes uh, any of those things uh, work correctly. And I, and I think from an infrastructure perspective, uh, yeah, object storage uh, leaves a little bit to be desired, right? The the thing that you'll hear a lot when you talk about uh, object storage vendors is well, just add a node. Well, <laughs> there's a lot that you just don't add a node, right? You have to, you have to rack it, you have to stack it, you have ports, you have all these different things you have to worry about that just add cost. And it's something that uh, I, I think I'd be very careful uh, as far as getting into. So thanks, George. Um, so going back to the uh, summary of backups as a service, it's it's a little different because it is a point and click technology. You have the instant time to market um, license consolidation, just as um, Vicky and Omri was describing. And the opportunity here is in the monitoring of the backup set, um, the services and what you can offer um, and what you can make as recurring revenue. And of course, the marketplace consumption. So going into this, let's talk about Storage Guardian and ConnectWise and um, our self-provisioning portal. Back to you, Omri. Uh, thanks. So the way we built our uh, plugins for ConnectWise is through Storage Guardian's journey as a service provider. As Aaron mentioned, we have 20 years of, uh, uh, you know, being a managed service provider. And so when we saw the, the you know, the Veeam platform in the, in the marketplace, what we did was we built ConnectWise plugins, which would um, make sense for a managed service provider to be very precise about what they want to add as uh, a quota of storage. Uh, we integrated that within ConnectWise Managed. This is a, an integration and we allowed the user to grow in very small increments or increase or decrease very small increments of uh, 100 gigabytes of data. So while of course there's many other you know, destinations and third parties, you can look for uh, integrations with, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, to to park your Veeam data. Uh, Storage Guardian has built a very precise tool to increase or decrease quotas of storage in uh, 100 gig increments. And by doing so, you don't need to overcommit for storage. Um, they don't need or empty space, which is a common. Um, you know, uh, uh, go to market for many destinations is commit to a terabyte, but only use 100 gigs. If we're utilizing um, the, the, our plugins, what you consume is what you pay for. And uh, if you need more, you can just go through the, um, the, the, you know, the integration and consume some more. Um, so that's, you know, one of the key features we initially implemented on the marketplace. The other one was the first of the month billing. Um, uh, you know, uh, which allows you to do the billing. And then, uh, you know, uh, we also added in pro proactive monitoring, which is the majority of our partners are involved in proactively monitoring local alarms and alerts for customers um, and um, escalating them accordingly to the help desk to for ticket resolution. Um, and, um, and that's, you know, an area that uh, I think you know, as there is a fluctuation in the in the pricing, one thing that say is kind of static and it, it makes yourselves valuable to your partners is the journey and you know of logging uh, logging in and creating a a service board around um, making sure that last backup happened. What is the recovery time objective? Was uh, recovery point objective and uh, building your your monthly recurring revenue around that and, and staying valuable around that uh, kind of um, important aspect of the backup of it as a, a, as a service uh, for your customers. Okay, um, you know, what we're looking at here is our integration, the API call um, that, uh, you know, allows you to see all of the ConnectWise, you know, tools that we built out called self provision tool inside your managed so you don't need to toggle around different um, you know uh, screens you see everything inside your connectwise manage and uh, it's just if you're familiar with uh, uh, creating the API call into manage it's just a simple integration and you'll see all the 
third-party tools that we showed on the previous screen inside uh, your managed screen uh, per per agreement per customer. So yeah. for here also, yeah, um, I was gonna tell you, uh, uh, Vicky, where uh, we connect through the ConnectWise through the keys. So Vicky, please. Oh no, I was just gonna say. I mean, I, I, this is a valuable piece of the equation. As, as MSPs, I mean, having as, as much data that you can sync or dual sync and, and have living within the, the solutions that your teams are using day to day is, is quintessential uh, for your success and then re reducing redundancies and stuff like that. So um, this is really key. And, and the fact that partners can literally put in the site information right here and then be able to get it up and running and initiated within ConnectWise Manage, it's, it's, it's that simple. You know, so simplicity, being able to set things up and then going back to the ticketing, like Omri mentioned earlier, uh, being able to know if there is an issue that raises a ticket and lets your team get on it faster, be more proactive about responding to your clients. And then also once resolution is done, you know, being able to wrap up that ticket and, and being able to free up your time as an MSP to focus on really those, those critical issues instead of spinning your wheels on some of those uh you know, smaller, smaller fires that can be taken care of through automation. Uh, the, another thing that we have um, integrated into our portal is the billing and product association. So um, as mentioned previously, we aim to streamline and um, provide more efficiency to to your your business. And in here, we added in the billing agreement and agreement where you can price your different products um, and select them into and map that to your companies. So having your license, cloud backup, cloud replication, all in different packages, um, map that into your agreement, and then being able to see how much you're charging your client, um, all that can be done through our uh, self-provisioning portal. Um, Armory, do you want to talk about the Billion Products Association a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, you know, common practice is that uh, you streamline the, you know, the, the first of the month billing with every single agreement you you process through your professional software automation through uh, through ConnectWise. And we, we just fit within that business model by, um, you know, creating the, um, the quotas, the storage, you know, at the first of the month and corresponding them for just an ease of use for administrating this, you know, and um, and just, you, you, you know, uh, submitting it directly to your uh, to your customers like every other part of your, um, your managed service practice. And, uh, we work together hand in hand with many partners uh, to get this integration and, you know, it's uh, been well received. Yeah, and it's all about empowering reoccurring revenue, right? And so this is a key piece. I feel like that this is something that partners want and that they need. And so definitely an, an integral piece to the integration with Manage. And also on that note, I know it's not the same thing as the ConnectWise Manage piece um, with that Storage Guardian, storage guardian uh, integration per se, but it does kind of connect to the overall picture of um, you know, Storage Guardian and, and Manage that when you buy in the marketplace, again, on this, the consumption-based model, all of that data, if you have reconcile enabled within ConnectWise Manage, it actually aggregates that data and lets you know, okay, I'm, I'm, my partners or my clients are all buying this. This is the price point. It aggregates the data across other um, MSPs that are also utilizing reconcile to know if you're undercharging or overcharging your clients. And so I think that's really awesome to be able to have that side-by-side -side comparison and know if you need to, you know, bump up your billing to your clients or maybe scale it back a little bit compared to others. All right. Um, lastly, let's go into the what about. So this is, um, uh, we really want to start, and I know it's the middle of February, but we really want to start uh, 2022 on um, having the open discussion. The, the panelists today um, are expert in what we do. So let's talk a little bit about um, how the our backup as a service through ConnectWise um, and it's things like immutability, scalability, redundancy, integrity, distribution, and also um, upfront costs. We did talk about that a little bit, a little bit, um, but I'm going to um, 
go I'm going to go into immunability. Let's start with immunability. And I know, Vicky, you did talk about um, security and third-party security. Um, but let's talk about immunability and what it is that uh, ConnectWise and Storage Guardian do to protect and make sure that data is immutable um, when it goes through ConnectWise Marketplace and um, how it goes through our, our, our center and our storage. Um, passing it back to you guys. You know, uh, with with the I can take this one from a if you're a Veeam user, you'll you know you you'll you know you'll probably know about immutability because it's often it's the case is that if you you know uh, if you set up a repository, that's something you wanna kind of want to fortify. So with the self provisioning, you can um, create what's called insider protection. Which uh, allows there to be a uh, a layer uh, or a recycling bin between your primary repository and your um, uh, and an extra retention policy um, should your primary repository uh, get compromised. Um, so that's an area that we've implemented. We also have uh, implemented outsider protection, which is um, air gapping your primary repository to different infrastructure uh, to add an extra layer of uh, of uh, redundancy to your primary repository because time and time again we you know we are asked you know how are we securing our our current infrastructure uh, our repository so that's something we added and that's available uh, currently via the uh, the uh, the self provisioning portal um, and um, it's a unique mechanism to Storage Guardian mm -hmm. and we'll be more than happy to demonstrate the immutability features. For anybody that's looking to go through, uh, you know, uh, ConnectWise Marketplace and demonstrate the self-provisioning portal um, and um, setting up the uh, immutability for them and uh, tracking it because uh, uh, it's an area that we saw within the Veeam software that didn't account for any costs associated with it. So we allow you to implement not only immutability, but also a cost structure around that as well. Okay, and um, George, I'm going to put you on the hot seat now. Um, in terms of scalability and integrity, well, there's a lot of um, talk about how easily scaled and um, how, you know, the the high integrity of object-based storage. Can you just um, sort of talk about that and also talk about any kind of mis, not really misinformation, but kind of um, just, I guess, um, myths about the scalability and integrity what they don't tell you with with object-based storage and also with what um is like common um in terms of scalability and also integrity sure so it, when it comes to scalability i think there's it's funny I'm, I'm literally writing a white paper about this uh right now before the webinar started uh it's not done so but um <laughs> the, the the scalability aspect is interesting because you know, it, there's two angles, if you will. There's not really three angles to scalability, right? There's one is how big can you get, but then there's a, a sort of a different angle of how much space does it take you to get big, right? If if you got to go buy another data center to achieve your scalability goals, your costs just went through the roof, right? Because data centers, last time I checked, aren't very inexpensive. Uh, and then the 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 third angle is, of course, the uh, difficulty in, in making those expansions happen, right? So what what's what are the the what's the work involved? And I think you know another one might even be how small can you scale? Because a lot of times with especially with object stores, you have to buy an entire node, and that node has to be, if you will, fully populated with capacity. So you might have to go from I don't know 50 terabytes to 150 terabytes in one step. Well, if you only need Five terabytes. Why would you want to buy 150 terabytes? You know what I what I always remind people is, uh, storage is not wine. It's not going to get uh, more expensive with age, right? Well, except for the current situation. But uh, you know, generally speaking, it's not going to get less. It's, it's going to only get less expensive, right? It's going to get denser and, and better and better power manage all that kind of stuff. So I think scale is a very interesting thing. What we're really talking to people a lot now is high density storage to so give me as much capacity as I can in as small a footprint as I possibly can and then let me dial that capacity to my specific needs so kind of what you guys are doing through the interface right just if I need you know 
I have, you know, five, 50 terabytes or 25 terabytes or whatever. Let me dial that number as I need it instead of having to buy big chunks of it all at once. And then on, um, it, it, honestly, object storage's claim around integrity is is overrated because again, that that's not a, a function of the protocol. That's a function of what the underlying storage capabilities are, right? And so the having a underlying platform that can maintain and deliver high data integrity is not something that is exclusive to object storage. And I've seen plenty of object storage corrupt, right? So it is really how well does the system manage uh, high frequency ingest? And, you know, you take a backup situation, you go from the, the system being relatively bored to all of a sudden here comes a bunch of data, right? How does it manage that, that change in velocity, if you will, of ingest? And so the ability to receive and put data to persistent media as fast as possible, I think is also critical. And then you get into, okay, how do I maintain uh, integrity during, you know, failure conditions, right? So in a, in a larger environment like what you guys have, you could have a failed drive, you know, frequently, probably more frequently than, than the typical small business would have. And so how do you manage through that without impacting performance and, of course, losing data access? That's the other key part of integrity. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, uh, George. Um, sure. Let's let's conclude this, and uh, we'll we'll pass this on to the attendees that's here. Um, Storage Guardian Advantage, sort of us, the uh, last conclusion here. Uh, we are we are a consumption based model. You pay for what you need. Um, in terms of scalability, that is what is um, best for the client that we're serving, and we worry about the scalability of our client. Um, monitoring service board, including alarm and alerts from your local repository, so not just from your cloud, from your local repository. Um, service board integration for ticketing and billing through ConnectWise. Um, and we also offer uh, options for additional white glove monitoring and report based on your service board, based on what you want to uh, provide service to. We have value added service, such as disaster recovery and validation drills. Um, and the rental model um, with free license um, starts at $50 per terabyte through ConnectWise Marketplace. Uh, at the end of this, um, in conjunction with, uh, in, in the month of February, um, conjunction maybe with Valentine's Day, um, we will be offering a free validation and virtual server to plan out your um, disaster recovery and validation drill. Um, that includes free spin up for virtual machines and our DR run book to document your disaster recovery process and uh, monitoring for the declaration. So all this, including the video of today's webinar, will be sent out to uh, everyone who registered and participated in the webinar. Um, I am going to pass this on to the floor for Q&A. All right, do we have any questions that came into the chat? Or you can uh, write on the on the on the chat and I will be able to see it. All right, I guess everybody's a little shy. Ami, do you want to uh, go through some of our um, frequently asked questions for Q&A? Well, I, you, you know, you mentioned at the very end, um, what does the disaster recovery as a service look like and how does it relate to backup as a service? So uh, often it's the question is, you know, how, how long will, will it take in a disaster recovery situation or a ransomware situation to spin up my servers? And so what we've built is a tool to allow you to, to create assessments for that. And it's backed by statement of work that you can present to your customers um, uh, with. Um, and so, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, if anybody would like to uh, take a, a deeper look at the, the statement of work that we built, uh, we'll be more than happy to share those uh, 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 processes with them. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, an, a, a question that is frequently um, asked for us is what kind of security and um, uh, essentially integrity we can provide as a service to our, our client. And um, Storage Guardian is SOC 2 certified. Um, and we provide 24 seven monitoring for our uh, backup windows and also for our DR services. So that is part where we are providing that extra added value to our client and our services. Yeah, I would say to that piece too, Aaron, that we have over 300 vendor integrations into the ConnectWise platform today, and that's just for ConnectWise Manage and Automate. If you were to tie in all of our other products, it's well over 500, 600. And what we appreciate about the partnership with Storage Guardian is that you guys took the, took the opportunity to make sure that your, your own customers and our customers are safe using those integrations. And so that is, that is key. We have open integrations, um, but anybody that is going through the certified process, it's not easy, but it also is really keeping everybody protected and, and more secure when utilizing um, the products that they need. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. As I said, um, I'll be sending the recording of this uh, out to um, everyone who registered. And uh, keep uh, keep an eye out on our website. Um, I'll send a um, link to our webinars page. Keep an eye out for upcoming webinars. Um, have a great Wednesday, and I will see you guys all later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.